Welcome to Sports News. And in the Nigeria Premier League, Enugu Rangers are in the market for a new head coach after their failure to extend the one-year contract of John Ubu, who was with the Flying Antelopes till the end of last season. Reports say Ubu's inability to pacify the players and not allow them to go on strike was the main reason for his exit. Rangers finished the season on a high note after racking home important home and away wins during the second stanza to end the campaign in eighth position, but it was a far cry from the club's fifth placement at the end of the 2012-13 season. Juventus Sporting Director Beppe Marotta says the club planned to end a 20-year wait to lift the Coppa Italia with victory in the competition this season. Uh, Massimiliano Allegri's side are also in the last 16 of the Champions League, but Marotta has stressed the importance of winning the domestic cup competition. Juve will return from the mid-season break in January, top of the table, and on course for a fourth successive league title. The Serie A leaders have not lifted the cup since 1995 when they beat Parma 3-0 over two legs, but they are determined to end that drought in 2015. Liverpool manager Brendan Rodgers believes his side proved they have the guts to rescue their spluttering season after grinding out a 1-0 win over Burnley. Rogers believes a top four finish is still a possibility. And with a home game to come against Swansea on Monday, ahead of a trip to bottom club Leicester on New Year's Day, the Reds will be confident of adding to their points tally over the festive period. Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger admits that Olivier Giroud deserved to be sent off against Queen's Park Rangers, but confirmed the striker has since apologized for his dismissal. Wenger, who was celebrating his 400th Premier League win as Arsenal manager, said the French striker should have controlled his emotions. Giroud was shown a red card for headbutting Nedum Onoha in their second half of the Gunners' 2-1 victory at the Emirates. A coach, Javier Aguirre, insists he will continue to work as the Japanese national team manager, even as Spain authorities conduct a probe into a match-fixing case that has named him as one of the accused. Aguirre was one of 41 people named by Spanish anti-corruption prosecutors in a case filed in the Valencia court on Monday following a probe into Real Zaragoza's 2-1 win at Levante on the final day of the 2010-11 campaign. The victory ensured Zaragoza, coached by the Mexican at the time, to avoid relegation. The golf prodigy Dylan Reels says his main target is to leave the slums of Buenos Aires very soon. The 11-year-old has been staring up a sensation not only for his impressive golf swing, but also for his mature manner and motivational charisma. Reels, who won the Copa La Nación for his division in 2013 and will soon compete in his first PGA tournament, says he is determined to forge a better life for himself and his family. And that's it in Sports News. The News at 10 continues shortly. And now to the foreign scene. Sony Pictures' controversial movie, The Interview, is still generating reactions from North Korea. The reclusive state has condemned U.S. President Barack Obama over the release of the film about a fictional plot to kill its leader, Kim Jong-un. The country's National Defense Commission also accused the U.S of shutting down the country's internet and use a racial slur to describe Mr. Obama. Sony Pictures had originally pulled the title after a cyber attack and threats, but the company later reconsidered releasing the comedy on Christmas Day. Five people have been killed in Malaysia in decades. More than 100,000 people have been forced from their homes as the Prime Minister Najib Razak made an early return from holidays in the U.S. He is due to visit the worst hit areas of northern Kelantan State. Eastern states are often flooded during the monsoon season, but this time officials say heavier rain and stronger winds have made things worse. Malaysia's government says the flooding in the is the worst in more than is the worst in more than 30 years. And finally tonight, the Technology has increasingly altered the lifestyle of humans globally, but who would have thought that one day you would enter into a restaurant and be served by a robot? One restaurant in the city of 
Zhengzhou, southwest China, is serving food with a difference, with robots as waiters. Located in one of Chengdu's best-known business districts in China is this restaurant where robots are waiters. The automated robots take orders, deliver dishes, and even speak to customers in simple phrases in Chinese language. But the customers still have to take the delivery themselves, not expecting service with a smile. The faithful machine have their job all laid out. They move along magnetic strips on the floor using optical sensor systems to run back and forth, serving food, keeping them from running into walls or people. Each robot costs approximately 70,000 won, and that's about 11,000 US dollars, and comes with a five-year warranty. Run on rechargeable batteries that last up to eight hours. For Zhang, the restaurant owner, whose surname is not given, it's a welcome development in the industry. The restaurant is quite big, so the workload here can be very demanding for white people. The robots come as a big help to the employees, and they also serve as a high-tech entertainment for the customers who come here to enjoy. The robots will never spill soup on your laps or complain if you don't leave a tip. Until next time you find yourself in a restaurant, don't be surprised if you encounter this new kind of waiter. Hmm. And the main news again. Former military president Ibrahim Babangida has asked Nigerians to support President Goodluck Jonathan in tackling the nation's challenges. The leader said this during a visit to his home in Mina, the Niger state capital, by the president today. The military has given reasons for the seeming delay in ending insurgency in the Northeast. The defense spokesman, Major General Chris Olukolade, told, told Channel Television that the security forces have not given up on the rescue of the Chibok girls. And the war of words has continued as North Korea has condemned U.S. President Barack Obama over the release of the interview, a film about a fictional plot to kill Kim Jong-un. That's it on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Illumide McCauley. From all of us here, do have a good night.